What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out End of an Era Retrospective. Now, I actually never checked out this video from Super Kick Studios. I believe it's like two years old, but I definitely wanted to check it out since this is uh the day of bad blood as i'm filming this bad blood is later on this afternoon and we're gonna get a hell in a cell between drew mcintyre and cm punk and a few that deserves it so i wanted to check out one of my favorite hell in a cell matches the end of the era match between the undertaker and triple h with hbk Shawn michaels as the special guest referee this Hell in a Cell was such a good return to form because at this point we've had the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view was already an established thing and it essentially killed the Hell in a Cell match type like I didn't even want to see one but when this happened and they put this on at Wrestlemania easily the best match of the night and it felt important it felt big it felt like uh like it needed to happen these are two are the most infamous wrestlers to actually three but these are you know obviously Shawn michaels and the undertaker starting off the very first hell in a cell and then triple h and the undertaker being in multiple hell in the cells it's just uh it was it just made sense it was an end of the era match and definitely enjoyed it man so we're gonna check it out go back down memory lane since hell in a cell is today later on between drew and cm punk it only makes sense to check this out and uh go back down memory lane in wrestling there's so many different eras and slowly each of them say a goodbye competitors no matter how big or small they may be win their way into the hearts of millions everyone's got their favorite but without a doubt Two of the greatest to ever do this, regardless of the era, are Triple H and The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. Those two names speak more volumes than I ever could. After all, these are the two guys who first off defined WrestleMania. The show we know it as today, if we take away their legacy, it's not the same. Their body of work is something special at that event. Secondly, through one way or another, their handprints are all over the WWE. From rivalries to spectacular matches, moments, mm -hmm. booking, and of course, inside Hell in a Cell. When you think back to WrestleMania 28, you're probably thinking of Cena and The Rock. This match was so big that it broke all types of buy rate and merch records for the mm -hmm. WWE. It was built up for a year. Rock's return was something that WWE fans had been hoping for for a long time. So all eyes were on those two. But also on that WrestleMania card was another match with a pretty big tagline. The Hell in a Cell match known as the end of an era. Mm -hmm. Two of Hell in a Cell's most prolific competitors were gonna end things once and for all. Three sets of people have had trilogies at WrestleMania. Brock and Roman, Austin and Rock, and Undertaker and Triple H. Yeah. The first time for these two was pretty simple when it came to storyline. There wasn't a crazy deep-rooted story behind things, but by WrestleMania 28, man, this was a different animal. A rivalry so deep-rooted and their third match on the show of shows. One last time, one final love letter to Hell in a Cell, one final love letter to the Attitude Era and its fans, yeah. and a story which was simply unforgettable. Let's go back and take a look at the end of an era. Great time, man. Great time. Love this damn match. Oddly enough, for this one, we don't start in 2012 or 2011. We actually start in the 90s. Meet Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. Two huge stars, but two guys who didn't get on the greatest backstage. Shawn Michaels was notorious for backstage antics and politicking to win matches and hold others back. Undertaker was the locker room leader who didn't take kindly to this sort of attitude. The story was that Taker had his fist wrapped up ready to give HBK a few if he didn't do the job to Austin. Yeah, we heard about 14. this. This was back in 1998 when Stone Cold was about to win the WWE title for the first time in his career and his popularity was sky high. Taker was tired of Sean's ego. Just a few months prior, the Montreal screwjob had occurred, so he didn't want to see any BS in this match. And luckily, there wasn't any bullshit. Stone Cold got his moment, Sean put him over, but there was a divide between these two behind the scenes. A year earlier, these two had competed in the first ever Hell in a Cell match, a match where HBK literally couldn't pull anything. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Mm -hmm. And as we know it today, that's a structure that's seen its fair share of wars. At the 1998 Royal Rumble, Shawn Michaels took a bump in a casket match against Undertaker, causing him to herniate two discs and crush Sheesh. one completely. 
Following this and the title being dropped, as I mentioned, Shawn Michaels, he left. He was going through a lot. And what's crazy, he still was a, you know, able to finish off the match. Like, even though that spot doesn't look that dangerous, it don't take much to, you know, mess up your back. So the fact that he was out there just mess, rest, wrestling still with a messed up back, kudos to how tough Shawn was. You may not have liked him, but. He still was wrestling for a little bit of time before he ended up walking away to try to heal up and stuff. A lot in his personal life. He needed to change his ways. He needed to get fit for himself and his family, and he did that. Fast forward to 2002, and Michaels had found God, and he'd also found himself in his second prime. The run yeah. Shawn Michaels had was something truly special. He was supposed to come back as a part-timer, but the body and Shawn himself was doing so good that he made one final eight-year run. Matches against Great Triple run. H, Great Kurt run. Angle, Chris Jericho, and then his career winded down against, of course, The, the Undertaker. Undertaker. Taker had built up his WrestleMania streak since WrestleMania 7, and he hadn't been pinned or submitted at that show ever. These two, they didn't see each other in a one-on-one -on -one match until 2009. But before that was the 2007 Royal Rumble, where these two were the last two standing. Great They had Royal a great mini-match to end the Rumble, great with Undertaker winning it and going on to challenge Batista at Mania 23. The following year, the two men who closed the Rumble opened things up at number mm -hmm. one and number two. None of them won the match, but the audience were going to be the true winners come a year later. We're at WrestleMania 25. Mr. WrestleMania met the... This is... I'm going to I'm going to continue to say this to the day I die. This is one of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. Dead ass. This was the match that stole the show at this year's WrestleMania. Right there. Fantastic. Easily one of the greatest WrestleManias of all time, bro. I I mean it seems so it seems so long ago <laughs> when you really think about it. Like, think about that. WrestleMania 25 seemed so long ago. But it's still a, a match that I remember fondly. It, one of the greatest wrestling matches of all time, man. At final Mania, boss sure. of WrestleMania. And the story coming in was Shawn Michaels was completely unfazed. He wasn't scared of The Undertaker's games. In fact, he was the one going to graveyards and playing mind games with them, having a funeral for The Undertaker. Taker, for the first time, was behind the eight ball. However, when we got to Texas for that match, it legitimately became that match. Yes. For half an hour, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels stepped into the squared circle and they made magic together. Magic. It started from the entrances. Good versus evil. evil yeah. Light versus dark. So good. Both these men in their home state and they pulled everything out. Finishers, near falls, Undertaker hit the iconic dive to the outside. Shawn kicked out of a tombstone. HBK yeah. even tried to win by countout, but it wasn't enough. He came up short. He couldn't pull out the win and Taker was now 17 and 0. The performance was heralded by many and people were in awe of what they just saw. Rave reviews, critical acclaim, but in Michael's mind it consumed him. He just couldn't let the loss go. He came so close, but in the record books, it doesn't show close. It only shows W's and L's. And L's yeah. Fast forward to the Slammy Awards of that same year. HBK and Undertaker wins the match of the year and you see that that loss hasn't sat well with Sean. Even though half a year has passed, he comes up, he accepts the trophy, and then he stops. He looks at the trophy almost like it's a symbol of losing. Turns back, mm -hmm. and he tells Undertaker that, I know I can beat you. He challenges Undertaker to a rematch. I remember this was such a good storyline because it, was, it became an obsession because he couldn't deal with the fact that he couldn't beat him. Out of everybody that had a challenged him at that point he was the closest to doing it and he couldn't do it and it, it became a, a, an obsession i love that such good storytelling there like you know you can beat him you know you believe that you can and oh this is so good man twitch taker goes nope not gonna happen Shawn michaels then declared for the royal rumble thinking if not straight up I'll just win my chance to fight him. He was consumed of this idea that uh -huh. he had to beat Taker because he came so close. But at the Royal Rumble, he made it to the final four and he was yeah. eliminated. 
that deep rooted feeling of Sean, you could tell by his emotion. He yeah, was consumed so by this. He was begging to be let back into the match. It was like his life depended on it. The disappointment was written in his face. He beat up referees and he was going to get this match one <laughs> way or another. Fast forward to the next pay-per-view, the Elimination <laughs> Chamber. Here, the World Heavyweight Champion Undertaker is defending his title. It was down to two. One more and the Undertaker was headed to WrestleMania 26 as the World Heavyweight Champion. But yep. from underneath the chamber emerged Shawn Michaels. Sweet chin music yep. to the face and he cost Undertaker the title and the match. He was consumed by this so much that he was willing to go to the depths of hell to get this. He was hell bent on going back to hell with Taker. So everything was made official between the two. Sean was gonna get his match, he wanted to live forever, but Taker didn't want Michael's career to continue. There was uh -huh. one condition, if Shawn Michaels lost, Mr. WrestleMania would be no more. It would be over. The legacy would die and the heartbreak kid's heart would be broken because he would have to retire. Yeah. No loopholes. Sean wins, streak dies. Taker wins, Sean's career dies. Sean accepted this knowing that there was no other way. And this was a good match too. Great follow-up. Wasn't better than their first one, but damn, if the first one never would have happened, this one would have been one of the best WrestleMania matches of all time. And it's still one of the best WrestleMania matches of all time. Career versus streak. It was great, bro. So good. Story was great. This was fantastic, bro. Dead ass. This was fantastic. WrestleMania 26 came and these two were the main event. HBK, Undertaker, one more time. They again pulled everything out of the bag. Callbacks to last year, but this time each man had each other scouted much better. Uh -huh. Tombstones, moonsaults from the top Woo! rope onto the announce table, sweet chin music, Hell's Gate, you name it. Sean's gone through hell just like Taker. He goes for sweet chin music. Undertaker gets out of the way. Tombstone, one, two. And Sean kicks out. Yep. Michael's kicked out, and Taker had Sean dead to rights. Sean looks up at Taker, and he does the throat slash in defiance, saying, yep. "Not today." Taker gets him up, one last tombstone, and the nail in the coffin of Sean Michaels' legendary career. For Sean, it was over. 18 and 0 was the Undertaker. The streak lived on, but it was goodbye. One of the best performers, maybe the best performer in WWE history, would now have to retire. He and. He stayed retired for so long. Oh, my God. Until he didn't. Ugh, this shit sucks. He'd leave this business behind, and what an amazing way to put a stamp on his career. The next night, he retired, and Triple H, his best friend, came behind him, gave him a hug, and the heartbreak kid had left the building. Great, the relationship great match. between Shawn Michaels and Triple H is a dynamic which dated back to the 90s. The two became close friends and backstage had many instances of holding others back and going on a power trip. Both of them formed D-Generation X together, one of the most rambunctious, loud, fun, and no Fs given groups in the WWE. Uh -huh. But as great of friends they were backstage, they were even better rivals on TV. Uh -huh. Whether it was a whodunit, a last man standing match, or even a simple segment, every time these two were in a ring together, you knew you were going to get something special. Great. After Undertaker great retired Shawn Michaels, he had a brief rivalry with Kane, and then he left. But in February of 2011, he made his return just in time for WrestleMania season. Who was Taker going to defend the streak against this year? Taker came back, and before he could even say a word, he was interrupted by Triple H. And they didn't need to talk. The silence spoke volumes. The WrestleMania sign in the back. Mm -hmm. It was obvious where this was headed. Both guys look at the sign, and it's on. A few weeks later, these two met again and Shawn Michaels came out. Triple H talked about how years ago Shawn and him made a deal that if either of them couldn't go in the ring anymore, they'd tell each other. But he was going to extend this deal to The Undertaker. Undertaker just couldn't go anymore. Undertaker then told HBK that he humbled him. He retired him. And then Triple H says, Shawn, tell him why I'm going to end the streak this Sunday. But he doesn't. Shawn Michaels gets out of the ring and he's like, you can't win sean no this was this was good too this the character development with the undertaker like i humbled him i ended his career what what makes you think you can do it like to be honest with you he's always been better than you and i beat him all this if i keep i'm telling you man if they ever invent time machine abilities 
I don't want to be seen. I just want to go back to that moment just to relive it, bro. This was so fun. It was that if I couldn't do it, Triple H probably can't do it. WrestleMania 27, by any stretch of the imagination, was not a good show. One no. of the worst WrestleManias and wrestling shows you'll ever see. Yes. From Raw main events to commentators competing to yeah. Snooki for some reason. Yeah, but awful. the no-holds-barred match between Triple H and Undertaker Best thing was about the brutal. damn show. It's sometimes forgotten for how violent it was because it gets lumped in with the WrestleMania 27 name itself. After a war between these two where both men tore each other to shreds, went into desperation mode multiple times, Undertaker took the win, but did he really win? Yeah. He got carted out of the arena. He didn't look like himself. He couldn't even get up for the pyro celebration. The yeah. streak was alive and well, but Undertaker, he didn't look like he was. On the Last Ride documentary, Taker said that he spent two full days in his hotel room recovering from this match because the bumps and vicious nature of this match Damn. affected him that much. The match at Mania and Taker not leaving under his own power was something WWE used to bridge into the next year's show. Yeah. You can tell they were selling the story that he couldn't walk away. Even though he won the match, he couldn't walk away from it. And they're they're painting the idea of The Undertaker, even though he is the phenom at WrestleMania, he's starting to show his his mortal side. He's starting to age. He can't go like he used to. He used to be able to walk away from matches like this. Now he can't walk away. And it, I, I liked how the dynamic changed from even though he won, he needed to get that rematch back because he's like, nah, bro, I can't go out like that. You, we had war and I won, but I didn't feel like the victor. And I'm sure he's going to talk about that next. Taker disappeared after this match. Meanwhile, Triple H had a new on-screen role as COO. Taker returned the following year to confront Triple H. They did it just like they did it the first time. Both guys looked at the mania sign. But this time, Triple H just pats Taker on the shoulder totally. like, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I, I can't do it. Triple H said that out of respect for The Undertaker, he wasn't going to face him at Mania again. He yeah. said that when he looked at Taker, he didn't get butterflies in his stomach anymore. This yep. wasn't the same dude. He's about to leave, but at that moment, the lights went black and a video played on the Titan Tron. It was Undertaker watching a projection of last year's Mania match. Taker said that this wasn't going to be the last image of him at WrestleMania. The next week, guess who was back? One of the GOATs himself, Shawn Michaels. Triple H comes out and Shawn asks him, like, this is all a play, right? Like, there's no way you're not going to take the match with Taker. There's no way you're going to pass up an opportunity to end the Undertaker streak. And then Triple H is just like, no, like, I'm actually not taking the match. I have responsibilities. And he said that this match won't happen, saying that Taker won the battle, but he won the war. In the end, who walked out? It was Triple H. Taker was carted off. Sean reminded Triple H what he was supposed to be. The ass kicker, the cerebral mm -hmm. assassin, the mean green Katie Vick machine. Sean what? tells Triple H that maybe <laughs> marrying a McMahon made him into one. Sean basically calls Triple H a pushover. Triple H then said that his responsibility in this new role was the future of the WWE. He was saying that he saw Undertaker as a brand to the WWE and he couldn't be the one who ended it. He knows he could, but he won't. Undertaker and WrestleMania, that's iconic at that point. Having someone beat the streak, you're losing half of WrestleMania. Triple H said that Taker, Sean, and himself were the end of an era. The last group of guys who would pay the ultimate price without question and that he didn't want to be the one to end the era. So the branding was born for this match. And then he told him that he wasn't going to end Undertaker for Sean because Sean couldn't get the job done. Because keep in mind, who retired him? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Lights go out and again a video plays. Taker asking Triple H to give him what he wants. We see The Undertaker cutting his hair and playing back WrestleMania like uh -huh. a menace. This time, it's Undertaker. Remember how this loss consumed Shawn Michaels? Well, yeah. now it's consuming The Undertaker. The roles are reversed. Taker told us next week that he's been reliving the beating from the previous year's Mania every single day. Triple H then came out and he said that it's bad for business if Taker's legacy doesn't continue. Undertaker wants Triple H to end his career. If he can actually do it, then take the match. Here's where Undertaker does something that you never do in the WWE. He used the C word. He calls him a coward. And we all know how Triple H responds when he gets called a coward. Thanks. Undertaker then plays the friend card. Triple H knows that he can't do what Sean Sean's couldn't. Kid. Because deep down, Triple H knows that Shawn Michaels was, was always, always better than him. That shit was a cold 
lying, bro. You, you, you know, you're just mad that you, 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 you're not as, you're not as good as him. And I always, I already beat him. Like just that idea is so good, bro. In the shot of him with the spotlight, this it was so good. That hit a nerve with Triple H, and Triple H accepted the match. He agrees to the match, but under one condition, that this rivalry, this era, and the streak will end, but it has to end inside Hell in a Cell. Ooh. HBK came back two weeks later, and him and Triple H were in the ring, and he asked for the footage to be replayed. And Sean found it pretty interesting that the worst thing someone could say to make Triple H do something that he didn't want to do was that Shawn Michaels was better than him. Remember, these two had a blood feud. They were the uh -huh. best of friends, but even better enemies. Last man standing, no DQ matches. These guys did everything under the sun to each other. But they were always together one way or another. So the deeper rooted story here is that Triple H still doesn't feel like Shawn is better than him. Every uh -huh. time he hears that, it bugs him, and he'll put everything aside to do what he doesn't want to do. Triple H then said that it had nothing to do with that. He was tired of people saying that HBK couldn't get the job done, that HBK was a failure. He wasn't a failure. According to Triple H, Shawn Michaels was the greatest in-ring performer of all time. It pained him that people looked at HBK as a loser. Why? Because of The Undertaker. So he wanted to finish it at WrestleMania for both Shawn and himself. Shawn then announced that he was going to be the special guest referee at WrestleMania. Shawn Michaels then came back with a replay and he's like, I've been walking around backstage and no one's called me a loser. That he's seen a lot of people backstage, but the only person he hasn't seen is The Undertaker. He mm. called out Taker and Shawn asked him, if you think I'm a failure or loser, say it to my face. And then Undertaker tells Shawn to think about what he's saying. Think about who Shawn Michaels is. Does mm -hmm. he really think these things or is he just insecure? Insecure about how Undertaker ended the legend of HBK. And then Shawn's like, yo, you're the one who begged for this match. Shawn reminded Undertaker that he was the guest referee. Taker said that if HBK stuck his nose in the finish, if the outcome wasn't pure, that there would be hell to yep. pay. And then he told him that, isn't it ironic that the guy whose career was ended by The Undertaker could be the same one who counts his shoulders to the mat? Shawn Michaels could still be the one who ends the streak at WrestleMania. Yeah, that, and that layers. Think about the layers on this. He could be the one to count the, the pin to the ending of The Undertaker streak. The same guy that ended his career, he could be the one to decide the ending of the Undertaker's career. I, once again, I've always wanted to know how much did Vince McMahon have input on this? Because if he really did, but still produced and gave us some horrible matches, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, around that time and horrible storylines, but some able, somehow was able to produce a gem like this, I don't know how he did that shit. Sean came out the next week and he says that he holds the end of an era in his hands. He said that end of an era really means the end of the streak. Triple H comes out and he told The Undertaker that you need to stop worrying about Sean. They hype up that they've been in the most Hell in a Cell matches combined. Uh -huh. That Triple H excels inside Hell in a Cell. Triple H says that he knows exactly what it takes to win inside Hell in a Cell. And then Undertaker is like, are you sure? Do you really have what it takes? He basically signals that he's not what he was last year. He tells him that it's going to be your wife, your kids, your career, your mind, your soul, even your life. Are you willing to put it all on the line? And Triple H says, yeah, I'm game. Literally, the game. Mm -hmm. He says that he's going to end Taker. And they both get the satisfaction from each other that, all right, they're not going to spare any punches. We're going to get the best from both guys. And they're both satisfied with each other. Right as Taker is about to leave the ring, he comes back. He looks at Triple H and he's like, remember when I said that Sean is better than you? He is. It was now time for the match. <laughs> so good. And then it just pans to Sean. Oh my God, bro. Undertaker was playing some mind games too. This was so good, man. So good. He is. And Sean's just sitting there like, don't put me in that shit, man. <laughs> I'm already retired. April Fool's Day 2012, was Sean going to make a fool of The Undertaker or was Undertaker going to punk out DX? You had so much riding on this match. You had a referee who you weren't too sure on his intentions. You had yeah. Undertaker who had this loss consuming him for a year. 
Triple H, who didn't want to dig down to make the world see Undertaker as a mortal again and end his mystique. Good old JR on commentary, Fantastic. Michaels, Triple H, and Undertaker all make their entrance. Taker's got a new haircut, the long hair is gone, but the question is, would the streak be gone too? Triple H and Undertaker, they lock eyes and they stare a hole into each other. The cell slowly comes down as fog surrounds the ring and the memory remains by Metallica plays. On commentary, they tell us that there's one person left to enter this match, and that's the Hell in a Cell, who's arguably the most barbaric and unforgiving person in here. It lowers, the bell rings, and it's time. Both guys start with heavy shots, and they lay into one another. The pace of the match, match is so bro. quick that there's no big feel-out process. You'd think that there would be one since this was a long one, but there wasn't. The brawl spills to the outside and Undertaker has full control of the match, throwing Triple H everywhere you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Ring steps, back body drop, into the cage, leg drop. Triple H eats a beating early on. And then the tie... And here's the thing, there wasn't really no blood here. It could have... They could have added some color to really sink it in, but there wasn't too much, like, blood... Uh, like barely if any they were just beating the crap out of each other in the hell in the cell to well i mean all three of these guys are you know notoriously known for the hell in the cell and being involved in it but it wasn't really too gratuitous in the blood department but it was still intense and violent it turns it was triple h's turn to get the offense in he uses the steel steps taker brought into the ring to inflict damage on him before the tide shifts again Triple H grabs a chair and he just goes to town on yeah. Undertaker's back. Shot I mean, after shot this after was shot brutal, bro. and no remorse shown. And for the first time in the match, Shawn Michaels plays a part. He tells Triple H that it's too much. He tells bro, he was beating the living crap out. I and mean, that's the thing. The story they were, he, they were telling is, can the Undertaker still withstand this type of punishment? Now, look at that chair. He's laying in those shots, and he, Sean has to be the one to be like, hey, stop. You know, this is so good. Stop hurting the guy, showing that even though this is the guy who ended his career, he has respect for him. Triple H says, you want it done, end it. And Sean just says, cover him, cover him to end it. Sean knows it, Triple H knows it, that Taker just will not quit. Undertaker is taking a beating, and Sean's like, I, I gotta stop it. And Taker's like, no, don't. Do not stop the match. Sean continues to beg Taker like, man, if I don't end it, he's going to end you. Meanwhile, Triple H is like, end it, Sean, or else I will. And then the sledgehammer returns. Shot right. And, and even then, like I said, it wasn't that much blood. It was just like, you know, from just the wear and tear on <laughs> being in the hell in a cell. But it didn't. This is one of the few matches it could have benefited from it, but it didn't really need it because the storytelling was so good in this. Right to Taker's head, but that's not it. Then this psycho Triple H decides he's going to go full golf club lumberjack hockey stick yeah. top on Undertaker's head. He's got it positioned. He's about to swing, but on the backswing, Michael stops the sledgehammer. He knows his best friend will do anything and that he might end Taker once and for all. As Sean is conflicted whether to end it or not, HBK gets caught in the Hell's Gate. He gets out of it, but he's knocked out cold. Undertaker then puts Triple H into the Hell's Gate and all three men are out. Charles Robinson comes out. Choke slam to Triple H. One, two. That's not enough to keep Triple H down. Shawn Michaels is now getting up. Taker is going for a tombstone on Triple H. He reverses out of it. Shawn hits a sweet chin music trend. I thought it was over. The sweet chin music into the pedigree. I legitimately thought the match was done and the streak was over that was the one of the very few times i believed it was over i'm getting goosebumps because i remember watching it live and jr on commentary selling this moment i thought it was over and it wasn't transitioned right into a pedigree and then maybe the greatest near fall in the history Hist of mania facts and one of the best in wwe history, history. for sure without the a count, doubt the one the two and Taker barely kicks, kicks out. out, bro. Taker would not say die, nor would he die. I mean, he's already dead. <laughs> Triple H shoves Michaels out of the ring, and he's so annoyed that at every point when he's about to win, he just keeps getting in his business. Taker hits a tombstone, and that's it. Only, it's not. Shawn Michaels makes the count, but Triple H kicks out. 
Both of them trade blows back and forth. The crowd is hanging on every shot. Mm -hmm. A pedigree doesn't do it. Undertaker then goes to town on Triple H with a steel chair. All while Shawn Michaels is conflicted. It's like the pain of his friend is also affecting his body. So Triple H has taken a beating from The Undertaker. He's gasping for air. He's in pain. He's bruised. He's battered. He's unable to get up, but he won't say die. He gets up, hits a crotch chopping Shot. defiance. Yep. Taker hits him with his own sledgehammer. All the while, Shawn Michaels has his back turned to the play. He can't watch. He just doesn't know what to do. One final throat slash from Taker. One final tombstone, mm -hmm. one, one final cover, and for one, the first time in this two, match, Shawn three. Michaels' hand hits for three. It was over. Undertaker had won, and the era had came to an end. Yep. One final love letter to the Attitude Era, to the guys aside from these two who helped shape it. That was it. Undertaker was 20 and 0. Taker had avenged the previous year, and Michaels had done the right thing, despite him being torn between revenge for himself or the right thing to do. All three men stood at the top of the ramp, and according to Triple H, this was unplanned. They all shared a hug, and it was a beautiful moment. It kind of signaled that no matter the real beef they may have had, no matter if they didn't get along, no matter if they couldn't care less about each other, that at the end of the day, they all knew their place in history. They knew what they were fighting for, and they knew what they were representing. Yeah. Taker and HBK started off Hell in a Cell. Triple H and Undertaker defined it. This was a story that came together so perfectly, and through the genius of all three men, they told this story over a four-year period. Yeah. Taker Streak was a spectacle within a spectacle, and from Mania 23 to Mania 29, Taker had the best matches on WrestleMania. The Facts. storytelling was something to marvel at. This one rewarded you for watching. It showed a juxtaposition of two different characters twice. First, it was Shawn Michaels, who had vengeance on his mind, and then Taker denied him. This time, the roles were reversed. Undertaker wanted his vengeance because he couldn't shake off what had happened to him. All three guys played their part to a T. And this was truly the end of an era. As we yes, know, just a few years later, the streak would come to an end, and now Triple H's career is behind him as well. But thankfully, they were able to give it one final goodbye, the way that they wanted to do it. The era may be over, but the memory remains. Take care, guys. This was a really great video, man. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a like. I'm gonna link down the original video down below. Uh, channel Super Kick Studios. Been subscribed to them for a minute, so go check them out. This video is two years old, but it's still, you know, uh, worth checking out. And this other content as well. His older videos and newer videos are definitely worth checking out. But comment down below. Let me know. What was your initial thoughts when you watched this match for the very first time live? Like, what was your thoughts? Did you think The Undertaker was going to lose uh, to Triple H with the assist of HBK as so the Triple H, or did you uh, uh, with the assist of HBK, or did you think that uh, The Undertaker was going to retain, well, not retain, but was going to win regardless? Let me know how y'all felt about it initially when uh before the match and then after the match how you felt about it because to me it's one of the greatest hell in a cells of all time it's up there for sure and hopefully we have another great hell in a cell later on today between drew mcintyre cm punk but i appreciate all love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace